The Norwegian coast is more than 100,000 kilometers. It's the second longest in the world. It's easy to understand when you see our coastline with all the fjords. What is special is that in our waters, we have the highest density of deep sea coral reefs in the world. Our best guesstimates, based on what we know about the seafloor, is that we have several thousand reefs off Norway. I'm Lene Bull Mortensen and I'm a marine ecologist with a focus on uh, seafloor communities. I'm Paul Bull Mortensen. I'm a senior scientist at the Institute of Marine Research. Our main focus has been deep sea corals and especially the deep sea coral reefs. I figured out as an ecologist that wanted to take care of their world one way or the other. So as 23 years old I just packed my suitcase and went to Bergen to become a marine biologist. We met at the marine field station of Espegren, part of the University of Bergen. I was a master student there and Lena was a PhD. We really enjoyed each other's company. You are not allowed to say that uh, I fell in love with my teacher. <laughs> How many publications do we have together? Around 20, I think. 20, yeah, I yeah. think more, yeah. Both of us have been working on the Mariano project, which is a program that is mapping the seafloor of Norway. Not only corals, but everything on the seafloor. Mariano, the marine aerial database for Norwegian Waters has discovered more coral reefs than any other projects in Norway. For instance, the last cruise, we discovered 44 new coral reefs. In Norway, we have this spectacular landscape on land with the big hills, and it's just continued under the sea surface with a deep and incredible landscape. That is very unique. Many people will be surprised to hear that we have deep sea communities in basically inland locations. But that is because the circulation patterns associated with fjords, with fresh water going out, cause the suction of oceanic water inwards. So there's very oceanic conditions in many of these open fjords. And some of these have uh, quite beautiful big coral reefs. I'm going to put uh, down the rod now. These reefs contain a wealth of diversity and rare species. Oh, I look forward to see how it is down there. Last time I was here was in 2005, 16 years ago. Oh, man. <laughs> See the corals? Yeah, look at that. This is Lophilia, an octocoral. No, sorry, it's not Lophilia. You know, I was too excited. Tropical corals, they use solar energy via the algae that are incorporated in their tissue to grow. As you go deeper, corals become more and more animals. They don't rely on the sun, and of course, the Norwegian corals they cannot rely on sun at all. Some people have heard that we have coral reefs, but still very few know exactly how beautiful it is. Oh, look at that. Uh, can you come closer to that one in the middle? It's completely covered with uh, basket stars. I've never seen uh, such a high density of basket stars. Why are they important to the ocean, the deep sea? Very often it's just a mud flat. If you have a nice structure standing up, you can hide in there, you can sit on these skeletons and filter feed or catch particles, and it provides hiding place against predators. And some have indicated that these may be stepping stones for the dispersion of other species. So they may be regarded as oases in a desert. 
important places for the connectivity of other species, not only the corals. Ja, han, han har olax och har samma bilder på land. Coastal reefs, they are exposed to many different threats. You have bottom trawling, which is a really destructive activity. If you do it over a reef, you can actually remove a whole reef in one hole. Then you have destroyed several thousand years of growth and it's basically not recoverable at all. It's mainly the fjord reefs that would be of the highest uh, risk to climatic changes. And that is because the fjords are enclosed water bodies that during the summertime get heated more than water outside. It's changing so quick. It's incredible how quick the temperature has changed in the deep sea water inside fjords. Scientists are uh, reluctant to come out with advice without too much evidence. But I fear that something is going on because I've seen so many examples of what I think is recently dead or dying colonies on the coastal coral reefs. We should at least start to collect data that can uh, prove us wrong. If we are not monitoring, this can happen without anybody noticing. We should start monitoring the corals so that we can actually say what's going on with confidence.